So this is great. So without further ado, um, this is the second Turn Up Her Mic panels I was saying. And um, yeah, I started this whole process last month and figured it would be great to kind of create a space where we can all talk and um, tell our experiences. And um, the, I, for those of you who haven't watched last time, you're in for such a great treat because all of these panelists are so amazing, amazing musicians, amazing people, and they have such great wisdom and insight into this industry. And um, yeah, they have performed all over the world um, in iconic venues on television. Um, you have probably seen them playing with your favorite artists. Um, so this is just really exciting. And so, yeah, I would love to start um, our introduction process. So uh, my name is Elise and um, I am the founder of Turn Up Her Mic. And uh, the aim of Turn Up Her Mic, yay, thank you, <laughs> um, is to empower and inspire women who are working in the music industry, particularly the live music scene. Um, and I'm also a keyboardist, songwriter, producer, um, and uh, I mainly play with uh, Chloe and Hallie, and um, yeah, and a lot of the people I've met here through were from um, that gig, so I'm so thankful. And uh, with me today is Shayla King, and she is the um, co-host of this panel, and she actually found this amazing magazine called First Gen Mag, where they highlight really cool creatives. So yeah, I'll let Shayla take it on from here. Oh, okay, hi, can everybody hear me okay? Okay, hi, I'm Shayla. Um, I recently, I think maybe like mid-February, March, started a magazine, like she said, called First Gen Mag. And what we do is we highlight creatives that are not normally given the platform to speak or share their experiences, share their knowledge. Um, and there are a lot of jobs within the industry that a lot of people don't even know exist because they're not talked about often enough. And um, I think it's it's an interesting kind of conversation to have um, when you know, you're talking to someone and they have a favorite artist, but they don't know who, you know, writes their songs or who produces their music. And um, I just kind of wanted to um, put spotlight on those people. So um, that's what the magazine is about. It's for people like you guys and other creatives that really just um, have a voice and want to be heard, so. Great, thank you, Shayla. Awesome, and so let's just start introducing all these amazing panelists. So I'm just gonna go across the screen. Uh, so let's start with Laura. Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm Laura. So nice to see everyone here. Thank you so much again for organizing this, for having me. This is the coolest ever. Um, I feel so honored to be amongst so many incredible, incredible ladies here. So um, thank you so much. Um, I'm Lara, and I'm a harpist. I um, play with um, not only artists, but also in like film and TV. Um, some of the people I play with are, um, let's see, um, like her, Anderson Pack, um, Ashanti, uh, Camila Cabello, Ariana Grande, um, yeah, and, and um, Josh Groban, classical and pop, and a bunch of different genres. Um, and then in terms of like film, um, I was so grateful to be part of the Lion King last year and a um, bunch of scores this year. I um, really also love playing um, with electronics and I do a lot of work with um, sound design and um, creating different types of um, sounds within the harp and kind of trying to use the instrument in a way that maybe isn't um, just straight traditional, but use like loopers, effects pedals, um, delays, distortion, and put it in as many genres and places as I can because I just love playing and I feel so lucky to, to be a musician like all you guys. So it's so nice to meet you all. Thank you again for everything. Thank you, Laura. All right, let's go on to Ellen. Hi, I'm Ellen Sandberg. Yeah, I'm a bass player, primarily uh, from Sweden originally, and I am uh, also super happy to be here with you guys. I mean, everybody's so dope, so it's super fun to be able to join again. And um, but yeah, I, I play the bass, and I play with some artists uh, like I mean, Chloe and Halley, like Elise mentioned, and uh, Willow Smith, who I was also. Um, 
as instant MD4, which was super fun. And I play for this uh, Indian artist called AR Rahman, which is also a super fun gig. Uh, but yeah, and a bunch of different things. But I'm just excited to be here with everybody. Great, thank you. And let's go to Ari. Hi, everybody. I'm Ari. Uh, I play guitar. Um, I have played for like many other women on this panel. Uh, Beyonce uh, and Jay Z for the OTR tour, Nao, Fantasia, Lauren, and Armani from um, Fifth Harmony, and a lot of RB people. Um, and uh, yeah, very excited to be here. I'm based in DC. Um, yeah, thanks for having this again. Last panel was amazing, and I really appreciate you doing part two. It was very informative. Oh, thank you so much, Ari. Yeah, this is really such a great collection of women. So all right, let's go on to Gina. Hi, everybody. I am Gina Luciani. I am a flutist and I do both playing with pop artists and film work. So I've played with Kanye. I played with him for like six months last year, including Coachella. And I've played with Ariana Grande, Josh Groban. Um, let's see who else Billy Idol like there's a lot I can't remember all of them right now um but I really enjoy doing that being a classical player I like to be able to cross genres like that and then I do a lot of film work so I've played on different scores like The Nun, Planet Earth 2, there's a new movie coming out on Netflix called The Devil All the Time um I know Laura was on this but Mrs. America just got nominated for an Emmy for the music we will play it on that. I don't know if any of you guys were also playing on that, but that's kind of exciting. Um, so yeah, th that's what I do. And then I have a lot of um, world flutes in addition to like flute, piccolo, alto flute, and bass flute. So I have over a hundred different world flutes currently waiting on six nays to be shipped from Turkey. So that's exciting. But anyway, that's a little about me. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. How about uh, Marta? Hey everybody, good to see you again and some new faces. Um, like Gina, I do a lot of studio uh, work for film and TV, soundtrack sort of things, as well as for artists and then performing with people. Like Ari said, you know, a bunch of us have worked for Beyonce, Chloe and Halle, Ariana. Um, yeah, so just kind of covering the gamut of things. And I play strings, if I didn't mention that in the beginning. I don't remember. I play violin and viola. Awesome. Great. And then uh, Kalia. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for having me, Elise, and asking me to be a part of this. Thanks to all of you. It's really nice to meet most of you for the first time on this virtual platform. But um, I'm a trombonist, composer, and educator living in New York. Um, I'm from LA originally, but moved out here to go to the Juilliard School for Jazz. I graduated a couple years ago. Um, and I play both in pop settings as well as jazz settings. I've played with Lizzo, Demi Lovato, um, and more jazz influences. I had the opportunity to play with Herbie Hancock, which was really amazing. Um, Wynn Marcellus in the Jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra. And I have a band of my own as well. And I just put out my debut album called In Bloom last year. So um, thank you. I'm excited to talk to you all today. So thanks for having me. Awesome. Congrats on your album. Um, all right, let's go on to uh, Kirsten. All right. Hi, guys. It's so nice to um, hear about you all. It's an honor to be here. I feel like. Uh, a little bit on the outskirts because I'm a saxophone player and my um, my roots are in traditional jazz so like my those are you know Coltrane, uh, Joe Henderson, all those guys um, but living in Los Angeles I've had a lot of opportunities to cross over into the pop realm so um, I've done a lot of the seasons of American Idol and The Voice um, and so through that I've played with a lot of um, you know pop people which has been awesome and uh, but primarily I'm a jazz player and I get to work mostly with like older older men <laughs> so um, which I, I love working with different generations and uh, most of the time I'm the only female in the whole band 
So uh, it's an interesting experience, and I've been doing it for quite a while. I look young, but I've been doing this for a while. So um, like props for everyone for sticking in it and just pushing through. And I hope you guys don't mind it that no one's allergic to a kitty cat. This is Gus Gus. He loves to be involved in everything, including my lessons that I give. And um, the thing I'm most proud of is that we were on Animal Planet's My Cat from Hell together. And Gus is now on Prozac and he's doing all right. And he loves, he loves music, it calms him. So <laughs> nice to meet you all. Nice to meet you, Kirsten, that's amazing. We also have a cat on this panel as well, love that. Um, all right, let's go on to Crystal. Hi everybody, I'm so happy to be here with you all. Some of you I know, some of you I'm just meeting. Um, my name is Crystal Torres, or Crystal Rovell Torres. I'm Philly born, Philadelphia born and raised, living in Los Angeles, Boricua, trumpet player and singer songwriter. And um, I got my start in jazz uh, with Roy Hargrove and Clark Terry, touring with them as a, a trumpeter and, and also a vocalist and went on into the pop world. I've been in Beyonce's band since 2007 when she first formed it. Uh, and I've gone on to tour with Alejandro Sanz and uh, Jay-Z, of course. Ari was on that tour, hey Ari. And uh, I sing and songwrite with um, different artists like Lupe Fiasco and I've been on lots of records, Janae Eco, Logic, award shows, all of that. Um, and I'm just honored to be here with you all and meet you guys. Uh, Glenda, I see you over there. We tour in Alejandro's band. It's good to see some women here um, that I already know. But I can't wait to get to know you all, Ellen, and um, hear more about everyone. So. Amazing. All right. Uh, let's go to Glenda, actually. She's right next to you. <laughs> all right. Hi, everybody. How are you? Um, my name is Glenda Del Monte Escalante, <laughs> and I am from Cuba. Um, currently, well, currently, as, we, as long as we can get back to touring, I'm on tour with the Spanish artist Alejandro Sanz with Crystal. Um, I also have my own project, Cuban Mixology, and I'm just now on a break from a rehearsal. The first rehearsal after five months of being closed in at home, um, and I was able to skip for like this hour to join you guys. I was really excited that I could do that because I saw the first panel that Liz did, and I really loved having uh, to see all this, you know, powerful and encouraging young women uh, and to just go for it. So happy to be here. Amazing. Thank you, Glenda. All right. And Lexi. Hi, everybody. It's so good to see all these familiar faces and, and meeting some of the new ones. And I'm so glad I got to be here finally. Last time I was in rehearsal, but they wouldn't give me a break. So, so I had to, had to come in at the end, but I'm super excited to be here. Um, I play guitar and I play for artists like Pink Sweats and Chloe and Halley, like a bunch of us here. Um, I've done like video game, music like Red Dead and things like that. I've worked with Hans Zimmer. Um, I'm currently working with him on a movie that I can't talk about yet and I'm super excited. Um, and yeah, I've done, you know, TV show, award show type stuff and I was signed to Sony when I was 16 by Simon Cowell so that was interesting. <laughs> but yeah, I'm super excited to be here and I'm really excited to talk about everything today and thank you guys for having me. Amazing. Thank you, Lexi. All right. And Michelle. What's up? Hey, y'all. I'm Michelle Baptiste. Um, some of y'all call me Mish, Mimi, whatever y'all call me. But I'm a drummer. Um, I've played with a lot of people, with some of y'all, um, Chloe Halley or um, Fifth Harmony. Um, Normani, Adam Lambert, um, Lizzo, um, yeah, so I'm from Houston, Texas, um, and I'm glad to be back again. I, I love it, um, and I'm excited to talk about whatever we're going to talk about today, so yeah, that's it. Thank you so much. Awesome. 
And uh, I think our last one we have here is Brandy. What's up, y'all? How y'all doing? Good to see y'all again. For those I don't know, uh, I'm Brandy. I'm a drummer from Los Angeles. Um, I feel like I've, yeah, definitely vibe with a lot of you guys. Most of you, like with Cole and Holly, obviously met through that or, and or working with Beyonce as well. Um, I also play for Lauren Heredi, Tiffany Boucher, Mickey Howard, Ozion, and a host of other people. Um, play all styles of music. I'm a huge lover of jazz. A lot of people don't know, but I'm like a super smooth jazz head and all of that weird stuff. But um, yeah, I'm just happy to be here with y'all. I'm happy to see you guys' faces and, and talk about, you know, just being women in the industry, just killing it. You know what I mean? It's a pleasure to be here. I have respect for each and every one of you ladies. So thanks for having me, at least. Thanks for having me back. Well, thank you so much, Brandy. It's so great to have you and everyone here. And I'm so glad that we're all here today and so honored, so, so honored to have you. Um, so I was thinking, um, because our last panel, we, we touched on a lot of really great things and a lot of great things were said and it was a very natural conversation. And, you know, people were riffing off of each other, you know, and really raising up a lot of great valid points. And one of those points was just the mere fact that um, there aren't a lot of us that are out here on, you know, the touring live circuits. Uh, the numbers, I think, just from our own perceptions, I think we can all agree that it's pretty skewed, pretty um, disproportionate in terms of especially popular music and jazz as well. And so that kind of makes it difficult to, um, I mean, it, it makes it difficult for us because just because of that fact, a lot of challenges rises up for us. So um, it's, it's also very hard to quantify because a lot of research has not been done on uh, women instrumentalists. Um, there was this USC Annenberg study that was done on um, data for songwriters and uh, artists, engineers, producers, and I think for them it's easier to find data on the percentage of how many of them are credited because um, we have Billboard, you know, there's record labels, publishers, all that, and it's it's much easier to collect data on like, okay, so, you know, we have this many female writers that were on the Billboard 100 or whatever it was, and so that is a very official study. However, for female instrumentalists, because of the nature of our work, because we don't have a company. Um, I know there's a few that are maybe signed to agencies where that's kind of, you know, um, contested, but um, a lot of us are freelance and we don't have HR to run to if, you know, stuff goes awry. Um, so it does make it very difficult to quantify how many of us are actually out there, but I think just by being in bands in which we are the only female, and you know, watching all the tours go on, and a lot of them are, of course, all you know, male bands. Um, and it's it, it's kind of just like a perception only, but I think it's very real. And my first question to you would be simply why you think, based on your own experiences and insights, why you think, especially in the contemporary music field, there are a lot less of us. So whoever wants to. Um, Grab that question. I think because they feel like we can't manage or like do the job, like we gonna nag or whatever. Like it's just always been a thing that men got it. Like they they got all the, the pos like higher positions and all that type of stuff. And I feel like when I see Beyonce or Lizzo or all these other people that are Rihanna who are like up there and just showing that you know what we can run a business and it can be smooth and we can have a platform to bring more women and show that like we're capable of running a business or being an md or you know like whatever like these positions and um but yeah just going back to that to answer your question i just feel like they they feel like we can't do it like 
we going to slow down the process or we're, I don't know. It's just, it's always that, like, I don't know why, but it just feel like we're going to nag or get on people's nerves. Like we don't have the, I guess the, um, the vision or the creative mind to carry out a whole entire tour or a show or whatever. So that's how I feel. And I think to, to piggyback on, on what you said, uh, also a lot of the people who are in positions of power or MD positions, management positions, institutions are all mostly run by men. You know, now we're seeing more women involved in those positions, but really, you know, when I started touring and when I went to school, all of the people I saw in positions of power were men, you know, so they're not if they're not actively thinking about how they can include women, which most of them aren't, then they're not going to hire women. So it has to go beyond that and has to be including more women, including women of color, people of color, which is just not often the case um, at institutions and other situations as well. I think too, like with a lot of um, like male dominated bands and things, there's also a camaraderie in that happens and when a female is in the band sometimes it makes it different or awkward like they feel like they have to act different and so it makes it less fun for them in a sense even though they shouldn't have to but there's always something that goes off in their minds it's like oh there's a girl around we can't do this or we can't go here or we can't talk about you know normal stuff we would rather do and um I don't know why that is, but I've noticed that that seems to be the case a lot of the times, and, and it's kind of hard. Like, I've been lucky in the sense where I haven't experienced that too much, but when it does happen, it's very obvious. That it's like, oh, it's kind of awkward because I'm here, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, I like to piggyback off of what everyone's saying. It's I, I find that to be the case where often especially for tours or things like that the people who do the hiring it's the artist and trust the md usually to do the hiring and people hire who they know who they trust to do the job and it's a lot of men in those positions i mean now you're seeing more women uh like uh tracy on martin uh kimbers divinity rocks you see them in md positions but often it's it's it can be a bit of a boys club you know unless the artist specifically makes it a point to include women you know i've had the fortunate experience of people like Clark Terry my first tour ever was with him in a big band and he had uh, Sylvia Cuenca on drums this was a long time ago Helen sung on on piano and myself on trumpet and so there was like not that such a feeling of feeling like an outsider he made it a point and he used to teach us about women in the past who don't necessarily get documented as much like Melba Liston, Clara Bryant, Belayda Snow um, just there, uh, a little, little hard and Armstrong, Alice Coltrane, so that you knew there were women that came before you. And, um, I feel like some artists like Lizzo and Beyonce, they make it, Alejandro Sanz make it a point to include women, to have that balanced perspective. Um, but I think that we need more of it. And, and there needs to be more of us in positions of middle management and leadership to include, um, to include each other, you know, because most of the gigs that I've gotten is all of us that we get is from recommendation, you know. Oh no. My grandmother just, oh, it's her. Hello. Were you gonna say more, Crystal? Yeah, I was gonna say okay, that. Okay, uh, That most of us get, you know, our gigs from being recommended by someone else, you know. It's, it's really, this is a very who you know type of industry. So it's about how you build those relationships. And like some of you were saying, it can be awkward if there's not a history or a long friendship or maybe coming up in music school together with somebody. Some men don't always have that sense of confidence with the opposite sex when it can build a rapport, you know? And so often it's up to us to take the initiative to come in like one of the guys and make them feel comfortable, you know? So those are some of the things that I've experienced. And I hope that that begins to change. I see it changing more and more, like so many amazing women like you on stage. You know. I was just going to chime in that I've seen a real um, change over the last 10 years or five years even. And I think that, yeah, like I'm always a fan of um, diversity, age, gender, you know, just anything because life is so uh, predictable. It's so fun to work with 
people that are different than yourself, you know? Um, but I definitely have seen an improvement with the way um, I'm treated and what some guys talk about when I'm there too. Um, and I think somehow, I don't know, I probably have a little bit of a people pleaser in me where I'm able to like learn how to get along with difficult people. But on the other hand, I think um, like having an appreciation for the effort that people put out and just in your presence, making that known that you're like grateful to be there and that you respect them. I mean, nothing that's forced or, you know, going against what your, your gut tells you if that person's really not worthy of, you know, being honored or whatever. But I think um, I'm happy for like the Me Too movement. And I think it just kind of either freaking out some people or just making them more aware of like how conversations or um, comments, all those little things affect everyone. And at least when you started this out, you said something about not having HR. Like I think um, when I think about, um, and hopefully this isn't off topic, it's all related, but when I think of bad situations that have been, um, I think like I can kind of imagine that like people just getting started in music and being thrown in a situation. It's like we need a ha almost a handbook for comments and predicaments, you know, whether I know for me, like getting asked out by employers, um, just, or like saying to wear so something that I don't want to wear, like on a cheap kick, you know, <laughs> whatever it might be. But I think, um, you know, it's, it's just, just having ways to deal with difficult situations. Cause like, I'm sure you guys have almost had anything and everything happen to you, like on a bandstand. So almost having like, for me, like having a, I've been even recently, like I've been playing now for almost probably 20, 20, upper 20 some years and having people come up and say something like a sound person come up and say something, um, oh, you're, your sound's too dark or it's whatever it is. And someone that doesn't play, you know, my instrument and just some random person, just having like things to say so that, you know, we don't get defeated. And also so that, you know, we're, um, so that we're confident and we, we're not taken off, go off guard, you know? So I think um, kind of what, it might've been Crystal, but somebody was saying like, if you're, you know, on a tour or something like that, just having ways to handle things where something doesn't surprise you. Um, and another thought I had was that I actually know a big band, um, the Buddy Rich big band, um, I'm sure some of the jazz girls know of it, where I've been recommended and Buddy Rich's daughter has the band. Maybe that's too much information that I shouldn't have even said, but she doesn't hire women. And that's kind of an interesting thing too. So my other thought is that I think um, I'm so happy to see like an upcoming younger generation of girls that are for each other because I think on one flip side, I know for me here in LA, um, I grew up here and there were some women, just a couple older women and there's, there's one I adore, but there's, you know, there's been a few that have almost been like, uh, gosh, what's the word? Um, <laughs> not to sound too dramatic, like lethal or something, you know, so discouraging making up rumors and stuff. So I am just so grateful for um, like Chelsea, who got on is one of my good friends. And I'm so grateful for like the camaraderie that we can have. But I think it's so important to have that camaraderie, even if we're not working together, just to speak well about each other. I think um, one thing that is worth mentioning uh, that kind of ties into something that you were just saying and uh, someone earlier was mentioning um, is also talking about this um, gender divide, not only kind of in the, you know, subconscious or not uh, sexism that exists in the power structure of like the male dominated contractors and MDs and things like that, but also uh, talking about it in terms of um, like gender tokenism, right? And so that's where some of this competitive nature can come because we know that women are often less 
I mean, not often, well, almost always um, not going to be the ones that are first considered. And then when they are, it often, you know, is potentially, you know, because of our gender versus our skill. And especially being a string player, and I think classical musicians that are then hired, you know, as kind of add-ons, you know, icing on the cake for a lot of pop gigs, this is especially prominent uh, for us because, you know, the all-girl string quartet is a very token thing, which can cause rifts because it is coveted position to try to get those few spots, but then it's also um, can cause divisiveness in our circles because then a lot of guy players are saying, well, you got the gig because you're a girl and they wanted a girl player versus talking about skill. Um, so I think that's just another thing. I know I've kind of stated it clumsily, but another aspect to it that I think is something that needs to be discussed and broken down, trying to change the environment um, in terms of that tokenism of our gender as well on the stage and have it be focused more on our skill. You know, and I think that there's something very important with that, with the skill part too, because sometimes, uh, or like, I just, I'm just, I really uh, feel like it's important that we keep working on our skill sets all the time too, and try to do as much as we can and learn more all the time and continue getting better all the time, just to like give people zero, you know, chance of saying something about our skills. It's never about the skill, you know, if we keep working, because sometimes I feel like, some women get a little, like they settle a little fast, I can feel. And I feel like it's really important to just keep pushing all the time and just, you know, okay, I'm not seeing a lot of female MDs. Okay, I'm gonna learn those skill sets. You know, I'm gonna work on those things or, you know, that's kind of how I'm trying to see a lot of the things too. Like, okay, well then I'm gonna learn it. I'm gonna work on it and just try to prove people wrong almost. And I mean, obvi obviously there's a lot more to it, but I think that's an important part too. And, and for us to like really work on our craft and also like somebody was saying that we, that we all bring each other up too, that we push each other up and not, uh, you know, start like that thing when it's like bickering between female musicians and all, all of that, that it's more like, okay, we're all gonna, we're all trying to get up there and if, if something goes well for one woman, it's not gonna take it away from everybody else. So we should just all try to do it together and just really work together. I think that that'll also help. I think that's a big point to make too, is like um, just being mindful that of the fact that one person's success doesn't mean that yours isn't gonna come or um yours doesn't mean as much or it's not as cool like everyone there's room for everybody in the sense and i think that when there's success for one person that it, it generates steam in the sense that everyone's like okay i'm motivated like someone's doing this like we can do this i can do this and and not to bring other people down and and just to take that as a sign to work harder and whatnot and another note too was like i forgot who would mention this but like you know, with the comments being made and how to deal with that and things, it gets kind of rough in the sense where you're, it almost makes you turn down certain jobs and, and different gigs and working with certain people because it becomes an environment where it's not professional. And, and a lot of the times it, we're taught to kind of just ignore it or be like, oh, that's just how so-and-so is and, and kind of move forward. Um, but I find it personally, like for myself, I, it's becoming harder and harder to just ignore it because it is such a after the Me Too movement and all this stuff. It's not a secret that it happens. And it, the fact that it's still happening and making certain gigs and things like that uncomfortable to do and be a part of is really unfortunate because it's not it's not like these people are unaware that it's not good <laughs> or uncomfortable. And um, unfortunately, there is still a part where you have to go, okay, like I just have to ignore it, whatever. It's, it is what it is and I, I'm just here to do my job and whatever happens, happens. But that's unfortunate too, because that's very stressful and it shouldn't have to be that way. We're all, we're, it's all, should be just skill and how you vibe with people and, and, and just how 
just it just should be skill <laughs> like and and it shouldn't be based off gender and things like that but it definitely has gotten better in you know the last few years it definitely has improved where i've seen tons of females out on tours and festivals and been working with a lot of the same girls and it's a really really cool you know it's just unfortunate to think that that stuff happens too and we all it's kind of like an unspoken thing that everyone kind of knows like oh yeah i know what you're talking about but it's it's unfortunate it happens i wish it didn't you know i'm curious if any of you guys have experienced this that when I was younger, I am always just, you know, I want to connect with people. I, I would think I'm considered nice, hopefully. I don't know. But like, I'm just, I, I like to talk to people and I'm friendly. And in the past, it would get misconstrued of, oh, she's hitting on me. And oh, she likes me and just things like that. And then when I'm like, whoa, 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 what's going on? Then people would say to me like, oh, well, you were sending this me messages. And I'm like, I was doing the exact same year thing you're doing, talking to all the guys. I was doing the exact same thing, but just because I'm a female, this is coming across this way. So I feel like uh, in certain situations, if I don't know the people as well, if I'm new to a gig or something, and especially if it's more male dominated, I feel like I've had to kind of put up a little bit of a wall and I have to be a little bit more reserved and really watch what I say so that I don't appear like too friendly or whatever. And I, it's just unfortunate. It's so funny because one of my teachers that I had in college, who's a, a male talking about when you guys are saying, oh, you need to make sure your skills are to a certain level. He told me, he's like, because you're female, you're going to have to be that much better because people are just going to say, oh, because of your success, it's because you're a female. And you're like, no, it's because I work my ass off. But, you know, you have to like go the extra mile for people to actually recognize what your talent is so that it's not attributed to, oh, she's female. I think something that I found that I needed to do um, after getting out of college because um, I was in jazz program in a very small jazz program of all men except for two of us. Um, the only teachers I had were men the whole time I was there for four years. Uh, and it was a really toxic environment most of the time. Um, but once I got out of school, I kind of had to reestablish what I want for myself as a musician um, and the people I want to surround myself with. So I think there's a certain level that we can do um, by just finding our community, you know, finding our community wherever you live, finding the people you want to work with and the people that you, again, vibe with and just like really focus on those relationships and any of the people that you've run into on gigs or at rehearsals that um, have hurt you in some way or have said something really inappropriate and unprofessional, kind of making a little mental note, note of that um, and then moving forward, staying strong, but knowing like who you want to work with ultimately. I think that's what I've found to be really important, um, especially as a band leader as well. Like, I need the people in my band to be extremely supportive of me all the time. You know, I can't go into a rehearsal questioning whether they think about whether I can play or not. You know, I just need to go in there. We need to like work on music and play the music. So um, I think for me, it really boils down to the people you know and the people that you want to work with. Um, that's really important for me. Yeah, and I love that. And and to also, like we were saying earlier, support each other and band together and um, also take um, the women that we support seriously, because I think so many times men don't take us very seriously, that there's not a very, um, like, an automatic thought, like, oh, when she's speaking or when she's, like, playing or, like, let's give her a chance, or, like, let's, let's all sort of, oh, you know, it, it says it, it doesn't feel like we have an equal um, like representation in, in terms of like a, um, uh, a leadership role in so many of these um, scenarios that, um, yeah, just banding together as all we are here, which is why I'm so grateful for this opportunity and for this panel because supporting each other and, and being there to really encourage those types of leadership opportunities and, um, and our voices to hear it is, is great. So. You guys are all amazing. I wanted to say as well, um, kind of piggybacking off, what La off of what Laura is saying, what some of you have said, that oftentimes when, when you're the only female in the band, 
you're like that token role, but when it becomes other women in the group, people start competing against one another. And while, um, I don't know, in the past, I haven't experienced it as much, but now that there have been more women on the scene, I've seen some people like compete. And I've even, I see UC guys compete with each other and talk about each other on certain tours and things. People get bored, they sit around and they talk. But I really feel like, and thank you for setting this up, Elise, like just normalizing the culture of supporting women. And also like what um, I think Kalia, you said about being so deliberate about who you have in your circle. And that's not just on the bandstand, just in life that it's like normalizing, leaving the room if the vibe is not right. Normalizing um, like what Lexi was saying, if someone gives an out of pocket comment, addressing it with respect and then moving on. And if there's another woman in the room having her back, you know, to a certain degree, you know, um, normalizing saying, I don't have an opinion on that. You know, if someone that tries to lure in conversations where it's like, at this point in time, all we have space and time for is support for each other. You know, I think that that's really important. And, and I see more and more of that happening. Um, I, I really would like to see accountability when it's not, you know, I think that that for us, like building up the confidence in ourselves and in each other to hold, first of all, ourselves accountable on how we are um, carrying ourselves, but then holding each other and then holding these leaders and band leaders and bandmates and management accountable. I think that, that there can be more of that. And, and I look forward to it. I try to like be that in the room and, and to inspire more of that so that the old culture of like just taking it to keep the gig is no longer normalized you know I, I really look forward to seeing more and more of that where it's not even a question and doesn't even have to be discussed yeah this is all super amazing i think a lot of what everyone said boils down to is like environment like is this some place you want to work and are these people that you want to work with and also environment uh, in terms of leadership as well like as musicians, we are also leaders. Um, and who our music director is too, that also establishes this kind of working environment too. That is one of the key components. And I think someone earlier was saying, um, I forgot who it was, but it was about um, the fact that there aren't many female music directors. And I think if we had more female music directors, one, to kind of establish a welcoming environment where people don't have to fear about you know being commented on or um or fear for their safety um and also female music directors are much more aware i think of the fact or in general i think the fact that you know it's like okay where are all the women in where's all the female musicians and i think they're more likely to call female musicians and also more likely to you know, bring in a, a, a diverse group of people, whether it's, you know, this amount of men or this amount of women. Um, ultimately, sometimes people will just call, you know, whoever is the best for the gig, and that's valid too. But I think having women in those really crucial leadership roles is super important, and having maybe even women who have a background in music, and, but they're also in management you know, who manage artists and they're like, well, you know, you should think about, you know, who your musicians are and what kind of environment you're creating for yourself. Because as an artist, like who you have on stage with you is also pretty important. Um, but yeah, so thank you so much for all this discussion. And there's so many great things that were said. Um, and kind of picking back off like everything, um, I also wanted to ask, is this something you think that, you know, and in terms of the numbers of women, you know, who work as professional musicians, do you think that it's just gonna get better over time? And I think we've seen, to, we've seen today, like now there's a lot more musicians. So I think obviously it will get better eventually and even out. Um, and who knows, you know, the matter of time and how long that takes, but do you think you'd rather see a more proactive approach of women taking up those leadership positions of music directors? Do you think it starts even before, you know, females become professionals, like at the high school collegiate level? Like, are those environments welcoming too? I 
think that because just because of how life works, you know, with each generation, there's new information, there's more access to things, there's more opportunities to do different things, especially with the climate that we're in right now. And I know just from looking on the Explore page and just some of the young girls here in DC who are like 14, 15, 16, the things that they have access to as far as learning how to program, learning different instruments. You know, it's one girl who's here who's, I think she's 16 now. She used to be a student of mine. Her name is Jordan plays bass, guitar, piano, sings, and knows how to program. And it's just like, because of the access to things and because it's not as taboo for a woman to be playing for major artists, it's not as, um, it's not uncommon now, even though it's, it's still not enough, it's not uncommon. And all these wonderful musicians that we have here and just in general, General that they get to see is like okay I can do that and they're gonna take it so far it's our like from the beginning it's already grown to be something like I know when I was watching Beyonce's original band I didn't think it was gonna be like this now so to see what it is now I know later it's gonna be crazy just because that's just how life is is you're gonna have more access to things so yeah i think it's going to be a lot more women in those positions later on i just want to like piggyback off ari i feel like um this like what's happening with women musicians like the tide is now turning and like this is really the start of like I mean, just like Ari, I remember watching like the original, like Beyonce's original female band and thinking like, damn, like that was probably almost, that was like 10 years ago to, if you really think about it, I was like 18, 19 and shit crying and just thinking like, you know, that's crazy. But I feel like definitely like just to see this panel right here, I feel like we are the true start of that, of that tie, like of, of that leveling up of like, when we were learning how to do music, like YouTube and all that was just starting. Like now you can go on YouTube, like hell, I'm teaching myself how to play bass on YouTube right now. It's whatever you want to learn, like it's on YouTube. And so like just with technology, with social media platforms, like there's so much information out there as well as, you know, mentorship. So by the time, you know, we're older, it's, it's going to be something. So I feel like, there's a heavy responsibility on our generation and like everyone on this panel, like we're, we're the ones that have to have these conversations to really set the tone because slowly but surely, like, you know, everywhere you look, I know I'm looking on social media, like, damn, I literally didn't know there was this many female drummers. Like I literally didn't know there were this many killing keyboard female players. Like we're out here, like we're, we're out here, we're around the world. We just don't have, you know, access to that exposure so now when there's people like Beyonce and, and others who co-sign for us and give us give us those platforms and now we have those pl platforms and we have our followings and now we have young musicians that are looking up to us and so it, it's forever a tide of just continuing like that tradition of like it starts with artists and then maybe now it's management, maybe it's a and r maybe it's musicians, maybe it's your front of house is a female. Like I'm seeing it and I'm loving it. And I just, I'm honored, you know, with the responsibility to just be a part of that true change. Um, and yeah, it's a blessing. I'm just rambling, but that's what's on my heart just to see like the fact that I'm I'm so gassed for us and like I root for all of you guys like seriously because it's like damn we are really out here and we're out here deep and we're and we're killing it and we're capable and even going back to what Ellen was saying earlier about just teaching yourself like how to be that MD like it has to get to a point where all the other BS doesn't matter being a female like how you dress like 
it has to get to a point to where with our craft, like it's undeniable, no matter how we look, no matter how hot we are, no matter if this is just the fit for that gig, blah, 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 blah. Because let's be honest, all that's a factor. And it's super annoying because at the end of the day, we're musicians, we're people, we're human beings. So it's, it's really about just diving into your craft and really just getting to a point where it's like, no matter what else you see or how you want to play it, like I'm a dope ass musician and I'm good at what I do. So just do that shit. Excuse me if there's kids on here and stuff like that, but just do it, you know what I'm saying? I would, um, wait, who was gonna say something? Crystal, let's see, what? Oh, sorry. I'm probably gonna repeat everything that Ari and Brandy said, but just to put all that in one word, just confidence. And I feel like I look at every last one of y'all and even Crystal, when she was a part of, like part of Beyonce band, like Brandy said, I cried. Cause the only person I saw was Sheila E. And y'all know Sheila E was bad, okay? Sexy, just, you know, that's all I, that's all I had, Cindy Black, that's all I had. So then when I saw Beyonce band, I was like, oh, I can do this. And then Faith Harmony came around. They was like, we want an all-female band. I'm like, and you want me? I put my own style because I looked at Beyonce band, Sheila E. Now, like Brandy was saying, now we're in the forefront speaking, being confident in who we are which is already hard because again, we're speaking for myself, a woman, black, I cut my hair off. Like it's a lot and we get hit. I'm a drummer, you know, like I don't do all the crazy chops, but guess what? I'm gonna learn my music. I'm gonna make sure that, you know, I'm gonna get the job done. So it's like, we go through so many things in different positions and I just feel like Again, like Ari and Brandy was saying, I'm just so honored to be able to be around so many beautiful women who are continuing to set a standard and and there's gonna be other girls come and set a standard and it's just amazing. So I do feel like there's gonna be more women in different positions um, just rocking for us and I'm excited and I just want to let all of y'all know that just thank you. Thank you for just being who you are because you never know who's watching. There's so many people that's watching us. Even if we're not on a big stage, a small stage, we're in a club, whatever on the street, like people are watching us and we just got to always be the head, not the tail. Like just, you know, really like do our thing and like granny was saying don't care what everybody else is saying you know like just be you be you is sexy y'all gonna hear me say that word a lot i love just as you know be you is sexy and i just feel like more women is going to be epic because we're going to change the game you know like our creative mind our vision how we do stuff we're classy you know we we have order like you're going to respect us you know with the authority and everything else. So I'm just honored and I'm just excited for what's going to happen, you know? So, yeah. That's Woo. Mimi, Michelle, wow. Ari, Brandy, I just want to piggyback off of what you guys are saying. As a member of B's original band, right, when we started, we were all very young, like early 20s, and ranging from 20 to 30, we were babies. We had never done anything at that level. You know, we didn't know what that adventure was gonna, what, what was gonna come of that, and how long the gig would last, any of that. None of us had any idea that there were other little girls watching us. You know, all that we had to look up to and to think about at that time on that level was, like you said, Prince's band, Sheila E, Prince in the Time, and that had already passed, like two decades, you know, passed. And so we had no point of reference really. And I have to say like, you're saying that things are gonna change. Things have already changed because you all are here. The confidence that you all carry, that all of you carry when you on your pages, with, on stage with what you're doing are things that we dreamed of. You know, at the time, it may not feel like a big deal what you're doing, but like you, some of you said, there are so many people watching you. Um, we did a reunion workshop at Berkeley, you know, and 
there were there was an auditorium full of young women that were killing on their instruments that we got to hear them play all week and it was just overwhelming to think of that that kind of those lives that you touch like people that see you play on a small stage or on a big stage it's they're going to want to pick up the instrument because they saw you and and while all of us are standing on the shoulders of great people who came before us known and unknown right now you all are that people we are those people and i'll tell you from getting big gigs losing big gigs getting called back on big gigs um being in rooms that some people probably thought i had no business being in or vice versa being in rooms just where it's it's like what's meant to be for you is going to be for you no matter what as long as you step into that room valuing whatever you have to offer and and a lot of you have already said that but just thank you for that confirmation that what you guys said is like i'm crying on the inside because our little 20 year old selves had no idea what that path was and that it would touch people or inspire anything we were just trying to prove ourselves you know and happy for the opportunity but now it's like you all are stepping into into that room knowing you belong there and it took us years of building that rapport and that bond together to build up that strength but y'all are showing up ready you know and and i really really can't wait to see how the industry grows from it cuz it's already changed because of you guys so yeah everybody here beautiful like also i'm crying on the inside too like the little 15 16 year old me cuz i was watching you you know, playing at the halftime show. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> like this is so like, just this camaraderie of all the women on stage. And I was like, this is crazy. I've never seen anything like this before. And it just gave me permission to just like be myself, you know? And I, it's so beautiful. I just wanna say that, I know it's kind of random, but it's it's exactly what you said it's like it you being yourself you are giving these girls permission to be like you know what i can do that and i can do it well and you know i can be myself while doing it so thank you for that and mentorship i forgot to say mentoring people is important i got to bring one of my mentees uh mentors like arnetta johnson now she's doing her own thing and we got to do the gig together and I'm sure someday she'll move on and do whatever she wants to do. I'll leave the gig, whatever happens. But it's like those people that are looking up to you, you're going to be the one to pass the baton to them and give them their, their chance, you know, and change their lives. So that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. I think for me, it's, I feel like I'm still in that spot where I'm like really comforted by everybody because I'm, yeah, I just turned 21 and I started really early in the industry where I was, I needed people to look up to because I was afraid of being myself and, and not being something that I thought people wanted to see. And I still deal with that daily where I'm like constantly thinking, oh, am I gonna, is this post gonna be what people want? Or am I wearing something that someone's gonna like? Am I playing a song people will know? Like, and it's constantly just, coming from this world that we live in where we're looked at through a microscope and you, you get inside your own head too much and you forget why you started doing it, who you are, what makes you happy and your authenticity starts to kind of like wither away and you can feel when that happens. And it really helps when we have like a group of girls like this um, that are so supportive and, and work hard and are confident and don't let anybody get in their way while still staying true to themselves I think is a really big deal. And for me, like, that's what motivates me to kind of just forget about, you know, the Instagram models and, you know, the, you know, just anything cliche like that it sounds so dumb, like coming out <laughs> but in my head. I'm like, I really do think about this stuff where I'm like, um, you know, I'm not as pretty as this person. I play guitar, which is super duper cool and da da da. But like, there's a lot of like people that have short attention spans and they're kind of naive to the fact that like, you know, you are a genuine person because these kinds of different things in the media are exploited that it's like, you know, lifestyle and you know, how you look is more important than how you act or how you treat other people or who you are to, you know, yourself. And, you know, it's, it's, it's really been an honor getting to work with a lot of you too, because I've learned so much 
over, you know, the, la the last couple of years is the only time I've really been touring and out with bands and working with artists and stuff. So I can say from experience and even to this day, like, cause I don't feel yet that I'm like, oh, I'm inspiring people. Cause I feel like I'm being lifted up by everybody else still. And it's really an honor to be able to have these conversations and personally like go in depth about the struggles and things like that and not have the judgment of like, oh man, like what if I say the wrong thing? What if I'm speaking too much? What if I seem difficult because I think these things are wrong or I feel uncomfortable? So it's really, really amazing to have you guys around where, you know, you can make it a, a an environment that's comfortable for somebody like me, you know, upcoming musicians, anything like that to go, okay, well, I'm not alone in this. And this is what I love. This is my dream. And I see you guys fighting so hard and you're confident and you will stop at nothing, you know, to do your job, get what you need to get done and do it all while staying authentic and real. And that's a huge deal. And I think that's super inspiring. And I think that's something that all musicians, female, male, whatever, are going to look at and be like, dang, like that's, I can do it. I may be weird. <laughs> I may look weird to myself. Who knows? I, my confidence may not be there, but it'll get there by, you know, constantly seeing female musicians like us and you guys mostly just like, and forget about the social norms and just doing what you do because you love it. And that's who you are. I think that's really cool. And yeah, I'm rambling, so sorry. <laughs> it just reminds me that I've done, I don't know about any of you girls, but I've had to do a lot of like self reflection in my life. And I feel like I'm in a really good place right now. And I'm trying to like now bring that over to my instrument because I, I know, um, you know, it's easy, whatever craft you do to like become too enmeshed in your craft where if you're having an off day, you feel like a horrible person. At least that's, that's my past. Um, you know, if I, if I wasn't uh, playing to whatever perfection that I thought I should be, um, I thought it, it lined up with who I was. And uh, so just you know, doing whatever I think self-improvement to make your, to allow yourself to be comfortable in your, your own skin, your own mind, your own, um, you know, around other people. And of course we all have thoughts come in our head. You know, if you're working with people you're, you're new to, or you look up to so much, but I think having ways of just like taking that thought and just, you know, uh, cognitive behavior therapy, you know, just being like, is this true? Of course it's not, you know, it doesn't say anything about me the way that they're looking at me or they, you know, they have an itch in their eye. It wasn't me, you know? <laughs> um, so I think just, just doing the self work, um, I was thinking this is like a super silly analogy, but you know, it's like us, I think for the most part, women are sensitive and intuitive um, but it's also sometimes our weakness and, and sometimes, you know, you read into things too much. So um, I like had a, a, a kooky thought of like you going on a bandstand where you're like tofu, you know, and like tofu can take the flavors of whatever's around it. Um, supposedly, I mean, it still tastes like tofu. I don't know what, who they're, who's making that up. But anyways, you get the analogy where it's like, you know, you're not. You, of course, you're sensitive to the environment, but it's not where it's like pulling you apart or dragging you down. And for me, since I didn't have any female, and now I do, I have a couple, a few females that I like work with really here, and I'm so thankful for that. But um, for the most part in my life, I've either been blessed with great male mentors and, and people looking out for me. And then the other thing is like, I just had to, uh, growing up, I always had guy friends, you know, I had some girlfriends, but I was always close to like, I was all the, always that Tom, Tom girl, Tom boy, whatever it is, um, you know, and then like having all those guy friends that kind of liked you and you were like awkward together, but you buddies. Um, so later, probably in my late twenties, I, I just had starting really good girlfriends. And again, and 
maybe in music, but I didn't have that blessing at that time. So just making good girlfriends and people that were also pursuing other crafts that were hard, you know, actors, comedians, um, even teachers, you know, I mean, that's, that's really hard. That's a hard profession. So just having friends that are just strong women and ones with goals and ones with character and ones that like encourage each other. I know that that, that I am so thankful for because I almost have like this mold in my mind of like, you know, what, how a woman should be treated. And, uh, and then that kind of carries with me, you know, into different situations. And of course there's always situations that test me, but then it's almost like what you guys were saying about finding your camaraderie. It's almost like, thank you. Thank you for saying that. So I know stand, right? Like if someone offends you, it's just like, it's like going on a bad date where you're like, um, I'm, I just got married last year. So my husband's not here, but don't worry, Daniel, I'm not dating other people. <laughs> so, but it's like going on a date where, you know, you have that first date and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they said that. But you're like, thank you for saying that because now I know I'm not going to go out with you again. So anyways, those are just my thoughts. Yeah. Hi, well, one, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I... Uh, it's so good to see all of you again and those of you who haven't met, I'm Chelsea, um, bassist. Um, I just wanted to jump in on what Kirsten said in the idea of finding female friends. Kirsten and I have a really interesting history, sort of, because we grew up like really adjacent to each other but didn't become friends until like relatively in our lives, like the past 10% maybe, but um, we constantly were like competing against each other at jazz festivals and like all the things that music shouldn't be period regard like nevertheless amongst two women um but i kind of always saw kirsten as like this on a pedestal idea of like what a woman should be in music where she was like holding her own with all the dudes no one really ever talked about the fact that she was a woman she was just a an effing badass like all the time that's all anyone said about her so because i didn't know kirsten personally i just saw this like golden model of her I thought that that's what I also had to be. And I assumed that she was like such this strong warrior that I had to be that strong warrior too. And it was so weird being like full ass adults until we talked to each other and we're like, oh no, that was like not my experience. Like I was not a warrior. Like, what are you talking about? It sucked being the only girl. Like that was bull. So I think if I could tell younger women anything, it's that we're all human too. And like the idea, like Crystal too, you're like you're obviously such an awesome role model for all of us. And like, same, like until I met you, I was like, oh my God, you're just this like untouchable human. And then I, we met and danced our ass off at this random club. And it was like, oh, you're a person. We're not just these, like it, it can be really easy. Like you're saying, Kristen, to talk, to feel like we're weird, like Lexi too always talks about how weird she thinks she is, you're beautiful, but you know, we all think we're so weird, and that we're the only ones that weird, that are weird, and we're the only ones that must be feeling this way, and like, I'm the only girl who has all guy friends, like, where are all my female friends, until I became an adult, and like, if Kirsten and I had had one opportunity to meet as friends before we were 28, my whole life probably would have been different, like my attitude of how I was treating the guys around me constantly trying to be one of them and like fend them off but try to make sure they still liked me and like all that crap just wouldn't have even mattered and like that's that is what I want for the generation below me just like stop caring what guys think stop it just stop and like like Kirsten showed me care about how you play and what your craft is but everything else is dumb find some other women have them remind you that you're fine the way you are and weird is cool. That's all I had to say. Okay, bye. Well, one thing that I have to say is, first of all, you guys are all so inspiring and I'm just so thankful that there is a space like this because oftentimes, we've said this before, but oftentimes women are just cutting each other down and competing with each other. And like a lot of you guys, I didn't have girlfriends until probably like the last three or four years of my life because it was always like this competition. And I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was like a playing thing. I'm like, you don't even play the same instrument as me. Why are we competing now? I don't know if it was like attention from people or what it was, but 
Um, now I'm just very thankful that I have some really close female friends and people that I really admire and inspire me. And um, so I think, especially for younger musicians, know that that is coming. I think especially as females, we're just kind of taught like, oh, we have to compete with each other. I don't know why that is, but when you get older and you have more experiences, you real you get a little bit more comfortable with who you are as a person and realize, oh, we can all do it together. I don't have to cut this person down for me to be successful. And we can actually both be successful together and actually potentially be even more successful if we do it jointly. So I think that's really important. And I think we have to be the change because right now women are being given more opportunities than ever before. And if we really want to see that change, that change starts with us. That is, um, you know, I mean, I know I'm like preaching to the choir because you guys are all doing this, but, you know, supporting other females and, and not being catty. I've had gigs that like I was one of one, like two girls, let's say, or three girls or whatever. And then the other ones were just like being really, you know, aggressive towards me and things. And I think it was because I was one of the only other females. And I was just like, can we just like be friends right now and like help each other rather than making this gig suck? <laughs> so I think that that's really important. Like, you know, raise each other up, be, you know, supportive, help the younger generation. And also we were talking about this earlier on in the call, but um, dealing with weird comments and things that are uncomfortable, as much as we feel comfortable, I think it's important to have something to say when that happens. Of course, there's certain times you're just like, it's better just to ignore it. Nothing good is going to come out of this situation. But if you actually say something like, you know, I don't know, that's, that's not okay. Or, you know, I don't really appreciate that comment and then move on. Just say something small. But if we all start doing that, then hopefully in 10 years, those comments are not gonna be acceptable anymore. That's my hope because I don't want the younger girls dealing with what we had to go through. And then also, um, I've been dealing with this a lot recently of the mansplaining. Anytime anything technical comes up, it's like, oh, you don't know what you're doing on Pro Tools. I'm like, mm, yeah, I do. And then like, they'll say something to me and uh, you know, it's actually their fault, but it's, they're putting it on me, things like that. But if we're able to actually show like, we know what we're doing and we don't appreciate certain comments if we're able to say that then hopefully in five ten years then younger generations of females won't have to be dealing with this stuff anymore love that yes like if we just know our shit like excuse my language but like if we just like know our stuff no one can say anything you know we we can like everyone's saying just like encourage everyone support ev every female who's doing something that yeah maybe um guys aren't used to seeing women using um you know pedals or they're not used to um having um women come up and set their own mics up or be engineer their own session or engineer their own um setup and yeah and, and a lot of a lot of men are uncomfortable with that um role being sort of like oh wait but wait a second, like, that's a girl. She shouldn't know how to, like, she shouldn't know what, what that does. What does that gear do? It's like, you know, we have all these tools. We can research, we can learn, we can, we can, if we have interest in that stuff, it's not just for the men. Like, it's for us too. It's for everyone. If you have interest in something, like, go for it. So that's why I really love seeing, like, so many females now, um, you know, being engineers and, and producers and, like, someone else was saying, like, front of house, like everything, like it's, it's, um, there's no limits to what we can do. And I'm so, like everyone is saying, just so excited and honored to um, see so many incredible women just doing it. And I'm, yeah, it's just good. Support, love, everything. You guys are the best. I love that so much. Yeah, I think um, a lot of what this boils down to is, like Gina was saying too, a lot of the onus is kind of on us because now we're in a position of like being able to have a community actually and see what each other um what we're doing and it's just so great and then to you know further nur uh, nurture the upcoming generation and it's only gonna get stronger and i think you know creating a platform like this is probably um one of the ways in which to do that and to build a really strong community so that it becomes easier for 
you know, music directors to see, oh yeah, like look at all these female musicians. Like how, why haven't I thought of that before? Look at all these killing musicians. They're legitimately good, you know? And yeah, so I've, I'm so inspired by what you have all said. And um, I think Shay was saying that there's um, a question from the audience. If you want to take a look at that. It's from Jasmine. Um, basically, she wanted to know if anyone could share their experience um, of like their first live major stage gig, like what that was like, and um, if you were the only woman in the audition room, you know, that first time and how that felt for you. Um, I was wondering if I could actually start that one. Um, yeah. Because it's very interesting, because even though this wasn't my first audition, but I've been in a couple of auditions where I was the only female there out of like 50, 60 people. And I'm like, oh gosh, you know, this is really not looking great. <laughs> I was like, I know there's other <laughs> great instrumentalists out there that are female. I don't know where they are, but you know, yeah, I was like, geez, um, okay. And then one of the comments that was made by management and they didn't try and make it even discreet or anything they're like they saw me and then they're like oh did you want to have an all-female band and I was like it's I mean that's that's totally fair and great I love all female bands but it's like as soon as you saw me it's like oh well you know you can have another kind of band and it's like oh so I can't hang with other guys all right well whatever <laughs> you know I'm just gonna do what I do and like you know not let that phase me and just like play my audition but it was just, it was just strange. I don't know if anybody else has experiences like that, but. Man, my, so I've never really like, and thank God, because my nerves would be shot. I've never really had to like audition, but there was one audition that I had when Designer first came out. And this was when Timmy Turner and all that stuff was on the radio. It was hot, blah, blah, blah. So I get called to do an audition for designers making his band. So it's going to be like making Diddy's band before designer. It was crazy. <laughs> so I get there and it's like a whole bunch of dudes or whatever. And it's like an audition, but they already picked out who they wanted. And, you know, the whole experience, once we got in the house and started filming and all that stuff, it was so much fun. I think it was more so because we didn't know what was going on. It was all of our like first like big big gigs but the show like all the guys got to wear it was all black you know designer he doesn't wear a shirt throwing water all over the place it's so much fun but his manager who is also a woman decides that I can't wear sweatpants I can't wear pants I gotta be sexy I'm like that's cool I'm down for some shorts or something like that and she puts me in this J-Lo type leotard with sparkles and they get my makeup done and the sparkle stockings and these high, high heels. And the one, it's like, I'm the one girl in this whole group. We, we didn't need, <laughs> we didn't need to do this. And then when we're taking pictures and doing videos and doing the show, it just looks like, it just looked, yeah, it, it was a look. And there's this one picture of just me in the middle in this leotard, just surrounded by dudes. Like, it was such a bad look. And from that gig on, even on the Beyonce gig, and I was talking about it to one of my homegirls, she was like, yeah, because that looked like a questionable pic. It's kind of like it had gotten around this picture of just... It was bad. And I just hated that it was just this great exper experience for like two weeks for the show. I have to dress like this for what? Like, who cares? I'm not here for it. I'm not here for none of that. Yeah, I remember I had to send in one of the only auditions I really can think of for a pop gig. Um, I had to send in a tape of me miming with a track and like me miming playing trombone and dancing for like four minutes 
along with this track. And I was really young at this point. I think I was maybe 19. I was still in school. I didn't have a lot of pop opportunities yet. So I didn't know what I was doing and I was so nervous and I just like, I put the camera up and I just, <laughs> I started going for it, but I didn't have confidence at that point. So I think looking back now, um, I think I would be more prepared for that, but also I didn't get the gig and I don't know if that was a gig that I wanted because that was the audition because <laughs> I didn't have to play for it at all. And it was really just based on how I looked and how I danced, which, you know, like I've had more experience, um, in settings like that, so I kind of, I have more confidence um, being myself while doing that, but it was really strange and uh, I was not used to something like that. So that was one audition experience I had. I just want to say like for any like young woman musician or anybody who has a question about audition process because I hate to like be that person, but just like just go in there with thick skin because a lot of the times, like, it's just, it, it's an unfair process. You know what I mean? It's kind of like you, you definitely get, it, you get judged like the minute you walk in the room. Like I've, I've literally done auditions where, you know, there's a couple females. I've literally done one audition where the guy who was, you know, judging me was, he was on his phone texting as I was like auditioning, like literally like, and I, I probably was like 18 or so then and, and, and it crushed me. Like, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I mean, he he had premeditated like who he wanted to, to, to kind of pick, but at least pretend that you, you know, like you're um, interested. So just to fast forward to about eight years later, this same person, he probably doesn't even remember who I was. I don't even know how, he, he's a big known dude. Everyone knows this dude, I won't say his name. Um, he doesn't follow me on Instagram or anything, so I don't even know how like he came about my page, but like last year he commented on one of my videos, like, yo, like, you're killing. And that for me was like a full circle moment because I'm like, I'm established now, I, I, I've gone on, like I could have let that moment break me, but the same person who wouldn't even look my way now is telling me like, yo, like you're a beast, you know what I mean? So I, I, I just want to like encourage those like who do go to audition to just know like, just go in there and give it your best no matter what, but do understand that a lot of being a musician is, is, is very political and that's something that you uh, you really can't prep for, you know, but people who have been in that position, like they can tell you, like a lot of it is about who you know, a lot of it is about like what Ari said, they have this premeditated vision, they just want this visual and you just so happen to play drums or guitar too. And so it works, you know what I mean? But it's like, we're gonna fix that. This panel and this generation, we're gonna, fix these issues but just know like these are some of the things you know what I mean that you will face like the, the politics the sexism um just them trying to fit you into this box sexually or, or visually or just this corny whatever just vision that sometimes it's just it's just not it you know what I mean so just be prepared audition wise for that but just know like you will get that big gig one day like all had and you know the first time you do step on that stage or field or whatever it is it's 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 gonna make it all the way through yeah yeah brandy that's that's so true what brandy what Ari was saying what everyone's saying um you have to have a thick skin um i want to share my audition i the only thing i ever really like in person auditioned for was beyonce's band and the band had already been formed they already went through this long, drawn out, week long process of auditioning. It was a fully formed 10 piece band. And I was on tour with Roy Hargrove uh, playing trumpet and singing in the RH Factor. And I remember being like, Beyonce who? Like, I didn't care, I was a jazz head. I didn't, had no like desire to work in the pop realm at all. So I didn't, I had like 20 people call me about the auditions and I was busy like transcribing RH Factor charts because I had committed to doing that for Roy for the summer. And I was like, this is my trumpet hero. I'm not, I don't care about this all girl gimmicky thing, you know? And so I didn't go to the audition. I went on a tour through Europe in the summer and, and 
had some really good and also some bad life lessons from that experience being the only woman in the jazz world. It was very, there was a lot going on there. But when I got back, I remember seeing the girls on TV. I was sitting at my mom's house having breakfast with her and they did their first gig together on uh, Good Morning America. And I remember just this feeling in the pit of my stomach of like, you're supposed to be there, you idiot. Like you didn't show up to this audition. You are supposed to be there. And it wasn't like jealousy. I was really happy for them. It was none of that. It was just like, you're supposed to be here. So I remember just being like, God, if it's meant to be, find a way, make it happen. I'm going to keep working on my craft. Amen. And so it is, you know, putting that out there. And about six months later, I met Tia Fuller at a Women in Jazz Festival. We were headlining a Women in Jazz Festival in Trenton, New Jersey with our own prospective groups. And they had us all do a jam session, the featured artists, and um, to kick off the festival. And we didn't even introduce ourselves yet. But afterwards, people were like, what's the name of your band? You guys are amazing. We're like, we don't even know each other. So we hit it off, right? Long story short, I kept running into Tia in New York. And I said, Tia, I know you guys already have a band formed. Um, but if for some reason you ever need a trumpet player, please just keep me in mind. And she said, I will. And about three months after that, she called me out of the blue and was like, hey, Crystal, I know that it's Valentine's Day tomorrow, but our trumpet player can't do the world tour. We've just been doing promo gigs. Uh, we need someone. We start production rehearsals in five days. Do you think you can come rehearse tomorrow on Valentine's Day? I was like, I mean, come uh, audition. I'm like, of course. So I show up. There's a snowstorm. It's at SIR New York City. I show up early, an hour early. They had pushed rehearsals back three hours. So I'm just sitting on that little leather couch in New York City at SIR by myself, like with my boyfriend at the time, he's not my husband. We waited for like four hours, no one showed up. I'm like, maybe they canceled, maybe they don't want me on the gig. And it's like, my nerves are going crazy. Um, I had looked up the original audition uh, criteria, which was a year prior to that. It was like, work it out or something. So I was ready to solo and like show what I could do and improvise. And I knew that on these TV shows, they had been doing deja vu. So I was like, they didn't ask for this, but let me learn it. Let me come prepared. Let me like show them what I could do. So I, they all finally come trickling in. And, you know, some people were really receptive and really nice. Other people were just like, who's this girl? You know, we already have our band, like a vibe, like kind of they didn't want me there. It didn't matter. Um, they were like, so what are you ready to do? Kim Burst says, what are you ready to do? I said, work it out was the audition. So I came prepared for that. And like half of the band just literally started laughing in my face. And they were like, I've, we haven't played that in over a year. That was just for the auditions. We don't know how to play that. Like, we don't even remember it. You know, they were like, so I'm just like, oh my God, my heart is racing. What am I going to play? So they're like, Kim Burst is like, let's do it. Let's do it. And there was one other girl auditioning. And she was somebody who I happened to be, I forget who it was, Chelsea, said that you were often pinned uh, against so someone else on the panel. Uh, you were often like made to compete against each other. This girl who was there, is another trumpet player from Pennsylvania. And in these competitions in college and in high school, they were always pinning us against each other. And as soon as I saw her, I was like, oh God, this is my gig. Thank you, God. I got this, you know, like trying to just be confident, right? So I'm feeling myself. I'm playing the solo. We're both doing well. She's a great player, but I was like, this is my gig. I got this. And then after that, you know, we play, everyone's like, oh, good job, guys. They're like, let's do deja vu. And I'm like, cool, I'm ready. Let's go. They start deja vu and count it off. It's a half step higher. No one told me. They also had me do like full choreo that um, all the girls, they didn't tell any of us, of us this. The girls had spent like a week with choreographers learning this choreo without their instruments first. And then with their instruments, it was like really involved choreo that the dancers were doing. Um, so they were just like, go, go. And I felt like the biggest idiot on earth. I know how to dance. I know how to move. I could do my little two-step and play, but I was not mentally prepared to play a song and have to figure out what key we're in and it'd be a different key and do all this choreo. And it was just the most humbling, crazy experience ever. And I was like, for sure, I'm not going to get this gig. But Afterwards, they asked you to. They asked us to say our name, where we're from, in the computer to, for a message to send to B. And I made sure at the end I said my name, where I'm from, and I said, and I'm going to work on those dance moves, B. And I moved on, and I thought for sure I was never going to get. I felt like an idiot, and it was a really, really good lesson for me. But in the end, they ended up, and when I when I got the gig and I talked to Kim, I said, what about those dance moves? Like I know how to dance. Uh, she said, well, I said, what about those dance moves? Y'all still wanted me here? You thought I could dance after seeing like me trying like to, to be all, being all lost? And she said, no, that was on purpose. The girls spent a week learning that 
we threw you in. We didn't tell you we changed the key because we wanted to see how you would handle not knowing what's going on in case things on stage go go wrong like we want to know if you're going to sink or swim and you actually held your own because you were in deeper than you ever should have been and i i wanted to i was like hugged her and i was like i almost wanted to strangle her like i can't believe you guys did that you have no idea i spent months wondering i mean weeks wondering about that like oh i felt so silly and she was like we did that on purpose because we wanted to see if you would like keep your cool if you would be cordial with the girls how if you know if you would snap and and so all that is to say, whoever was asking about auditions, like show up as prepared as possible as you possibly can be. But you may come across circumstances where you're just not going to be prepared. Someone may be trying to see how you're going to act in situations where you can't even be prepared. Um, the other thing is, as long as you take your craft seriously, like some of the girls are saying, if people, you never know who's watching. Your name, if you're there in that audition room, it's because your name has entered the room before you did. People already heard about you and knew about you and they saw something of value. So that's why they want you there. And then the final thing is like, no matter what, I said it before, but I can't stress it enough, is like, if something's meant to be yours, it's going to be yours. So when you show up, you don't have to stress, you don't have to worry about what are they gonna think of me. If that gig is supposed to be yours, I don't care what happens, it's going to be yours. If it's not supposed to be yours, you could show up and kill it and blow everybody out the water and be the flyest, prettiest, most sexy, incredible thing, talented thing on earth, and you're not gonna get the gig. So you can take that weight off of your shoulders if you ever do have to enter a room like that and audition. I, I hope that encourages somebody. Yeah, I also wanted to add too, I, I felt similarly like that kind of experience of like, there was one audition, I haven't done many auditions, especially like in person ones, I've done more like, um, submit online, like email, back and forth kind of thing. But one time, this was one of the auditions where it was like, I was the only girl there. And um, this was one because like they weren't very specific about it when they like posted it online and everything. They're just like, yeah, just show up. And I just showed up and like everybody else, they're like, oh yeah, like we were practicing the artist songs and stuff. And I mean, I like heard it and like, like played through it and stuff, but literally the guy, the MD of that project, he was like, yeah, just play whatever. He didn't even want to hear the artist songs. So he's like, yeah, just play whatever you want. And people were literally just playing whatever came to mind. And so, yeah, definitely there's situations where like, yeah, you can get really prepared and kind of anticipate. One guy actually showed up with his own keyboard with already sounds programmed in. And I was like, dang, wow, you went really far with this. Um, Cause I knew they were already gonna have like keys set up there and everything, but sometimes it's really hard to anticipate what's gonna happen even in a situation where you already got the gig and you know the people and you know stuff can go awry and so having that mindset of like you know just whatever happens just you know keep your cool and like whatever happens it's all gonna work out and yeah I, I truly did feel that I'll go I've only had a couple live auditions. Um, Crystal, I love your stories, like so many lessons in that one story, it's insane. Um, kind of going off what you were saying about like your, your attitude, not only when you're sinking or swimming, but I think there have been a few gigs that I sealed the audition for myself the second I walked in the room. A lot of times, exactly like you said, your reputation kind of precedes you. So these people already know that you can play it's not as much about your playing as it is your personality and how you meld with the band. And um, if you walk in and like instantly are yourself and like make people laugh, I'm a super introverted person. I, I'm not like loud joke maker kind of person, but I like to just kind of like, I'll just like drop us like a kind of sarcastic joke. And if they latch onto that, then I know that they're my people. Cause it's not just about if like, it's not just about you changing yourself to get the gig right it's about like if this gig is right for you too like you're going to be happy with these people so if if like within the first five seconds i've made some kind of like latch with anyone in the room then it's going to be a good situation um something else i wanted to add just because i think a lot of us are saying like the live kind of cattle call in-person audition thing is not as common anymore 
Um, and I've had multiple people tell me that I only got the gig based on the videos I put on my Instagram. And I swear, I hate saying that out loud more than any, like, I'm sure all of us hate that, but like truly people, that's what people do now. It's like, oh, what is this girl's handle? And then they, they look you up and they watch your videos. And if they think you're cool, like you get the gig. Sometimes you don't even have to audition past that. So, um, yeah, unfortunately that crap matters. I think followers hopefully don't matter as much, but at least having a couple things, like I, I just treat my Instagram like my resume now. Um, so yeah, instead of in-person auditions, I think that that's a big thing. I actually think that's huge, Chelsea, because uh, like that's really what it is now for me. It's been more, I mean, it's a lot of who knows who and, and kind of just that, but, but also the videos, like it's, it gets a bad rep sometimes. I think some people talk about Instagram as if it's only to get the followers and whatever, you know, but it is like, we, we do have to market ourselves. So I think even like, I've even been in situations where I've tried to recommend someone else and then they have no videos anywhere. So I can't really, there's nothing to send. And it's like, I know this person is killing, but I can't show that, you know, and it gets frustrating. So I do think that's a, like a really important thing uh, to keep in mind, to just put, put stuff out there, you know, like show what you can do. It doesn't need to be any, like it could just be you sitting and playing, you know, you don't have to be all dolled up or whatever, like just show what you can do, you know? And I think that's, I think that's a really like important thing to do also. Yeah. Yeah, I was so resistant to utilizing social media as kind of a marketing platform. Um, and I think like Lexi kind of mentioned um, earlier, it's really hard to figure out how to do it in a way that feels comfortable and authentic for yourself because you do know like if you post something, anyone can look at that photo or video over and over. They can listen super carefully to like how you're playing, what it sounds like, da da da. Um, so there is a bit of that, you know, personal anxiety and kind of preciousness over it that we have to work through. But like everyone is saying, you know, most times when I meet a new MD, they ask, what's your Instagram handle? And it is indeed free marketing that everyone else is using. And so what I had to kind of tell myself to train myself into a slightly different mindset is if everyone else is doing it and it's this free option and it's super successful and I'm not doing it, then I'm doing myself a disservice, right? Um, and I have actually gotten so much work in quarantine. I have a remote set up in studio here at my house. The simplest, littlest things as just like posting a photo of my logic session for a, a recent project or something just like pings people's minds and, and you know, reminds them of my skill set and then they go, oh, actually I need strings for a project and whatnot. So it is something that I think is important to cultivate even if we're not all necessarily amped about it in the beginning because it does, it does garner gigs. Definitely. Oh, oh sorry, Ari, go ahead. Sorry, girl. Um, I was just gonna say that um, I think what makes it a little bit easier, I mean, I love social media. When, when it first came out, I was on Facebook, Vine, Twitter, MySpace, TikTok. I love all of it. Um, but I do have a lot of friends who are kind of hesitant to do it because to a certain extent, it does feel kind of vain. But um, I think it helps when you think of it more as like a resume and not so much, okay, I'm posting this video of me and I got to look like this and this for my followers. This is like your digital resume. Like I haven't had a job interview in God, like 10 years, but I think of it like that. Okay. Here are my credentials. Oh, I work with this person, this person, this person. I know these songs. I know these techniques. I'm just going to put it on this digital resume and that's what it's for work so i think if you think of it less as Ooh, here i go look at me play y'all and more like okay this is for my future mds it makes it a little bit easier exactly yeah i was gonna say similar where it's um it's kind of like we have the power now to create our own narrative on how we um 
you know, our own marketing capabilities. We don't have to wait for somebody to say like, Oh, I wonder if she does anything with this. It's like, we can, if we, if that's something that we want to do with, that's the kind of jobs, that's the kind of things that we want to be involved in. We have that power now to, um, like I said, have our own voices be, um, be that for us, be our own, our own narrative in, in terms of directing the jobs or directing what kind of projects that you would like to be involved in. It's just showing, showing people that you are able to do that, um, which is a super powerful tool. So I'm excited that to see so many players and so many female players on there. Like someone was saying earlier about the For You page on Instagram, like, oh my God, I love scrolling through there and finding just so many young players. And I'm like, oh man, like look at everyone go. So, so yeah, like everyone is saying, I think it's awesome. It's our, our, our way to, to, to be our own our own narrative, our own, our own advocates for ourselves, you know, and what our skills and what we can do. I had always said too, like, I'd never had my, like a private Instagram or like private social media. Like everything has literally been treated like, like a portfolio or like a resume. And, and also like a lot of social media too is like illusion. So you, you kind of post where you're like, you want people to think they know you when they, they can vibe with you and they can relate to you but in the reality like y'all don't know nothing <laughs> like, <laughs> like you you see what is being presented and in a sense because that's how you want to look to employers you want to look to colleagues and friends and stuff when you are getting you know using it as a platform for gigs and whatnot and for mainly just work you know and a lot of getting a gig too is like personality and like if they think you can vibe and so you want to showcase yourself as authentically as you can you know with like lifestyle things and like oh here's a little selfie and stuff it's like you want to it's like relatable in a sense but at the same time like like Ari was saying like you you, you don't post videos to be like mm, look at me like <laughs> I'm playing guitar I'm so sick like it's more like this is what I can do outside of like me being a person like I, this is my job and I'm good at it this is what I can do and I'm presenting that and then the next day I'll be like hey here I am at the beach like I'm cool I'm normal too <laughs> like, <laughs> like I can hang like I think that's mostly how it, it's always been for me because I I honestly don't like social media I don't I've never been like posting like oh did you hear what this person said and like do you like like this celebrity and this like I really don't like it because it makes me feel bad about myself <laughs> because like I said it's an illusion but it gets in your head where you're like dang they got all this money they get they're doing all the stuff they're on this vacation they're friends with this person da, 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 da. and it's really easy to just like take it and go oh snap like am I a loser like what the heck <laughs> so I am not a fan but I think that's more in a sense because it's like I'm not as confident and like because I'm still trying to get somewhere you know I haven't achieved like my life goals and whatnot so I see people like live in the life I'm like dang like I want that to be me and I'll look at it to be like all right I need to work harder but then if I dwell on it then it I just ends up being like a bad thing for me so I like take it in pieces like oh this person's doing this like I should learn how to do that okay then get off like <laughs> kind of deal because after a while I'm just like dang like like it's just not good thoughts <laughs> so but it's definitely like a thing where it is a portfolio mostly you know I'm not on there like dm and guys and stuff you know <laughs> like anything like that like it, it's just it's all you know for music about music looking at other musicians and all that stuff you know yeah <laughs> I feel that so deeply I I really do not like everybody is saying like I personally don't like being on social media but that's why last year I you know didn't really post all that much because I was like man I I really don't like it here but I just realized it's it's just a tool um it's exactly that and it does come with a balance like Lexi was saying like yeah you don't want to spend all too much time on it but um a music director pulled me to the side one day he was like where's all your videos like where's your Instagram like what what's going on with you I'm like I don't like it he's like that's no excuse like you just need to like anything he's like just just 
like post a video of you like just eating something and playing at the same time. I don't know, something ridiculous. And I was like, yeah, that's probably the best idea. So he was kind of saying, just treat it like a business. Like, you know, it's really just there for you to, you know, show people that you're still there, you still can play or whatever. So that's, and that does come with a balance, but it's so important. And just connecting with people that you're meant to be connected with um and so just treating it like that and balancing it off to the side because i think i was just i'm naturally kind of an introvert and i don't like you know going out and just doing all this stuff but it is it is a business it is a hustle and it's something that just needs to be done so yeah <laughs> also, Lee, i, I could have swore you were a party girl at least come on brandy <laughs> Also, like when you post, I noticed because I I follow like different just music pages in general that have like I I know nothing about violence, but I will follow a page with the hashtag violence. Just watch like oh my gosh, she's so good. And there are people who play like it was this one drummer chick I saw playing and she was like smiling and dancing and having a good time. But then you have some old ass man under the comments like. Why is she making those faces? She's not really playing. Um, that wasn't even impressive. All of that, sis, don't even worry about it. Because people will talk about like the Kenny G's or people who don't really play or it's not real music or she's dancing too much or she's just pretty. That's why they're looking at her. Well, why are you sitting over there writing about her video? She's doing Jimmy Fallon. She's doing the Grammys. She's doing BET Awards. Like, you go ahead and say what you want about her. But she's doing that at the BET Awards, okay? So don't worry about all the people who are sitting at home with the Twitter fingers when you do your post. Work on that resume, girl. Um, really quick, um, I'm not, obviously I'm not a musician, but um, when it comes to having a magazine, one of the things um, I've been able to just have access to is um, to see my engagement and what people are clicking on and um, how people are connecting directly with us. And we have a website. You can access the website via mobile site, but you can also access it on desktop like any any old thing, right? And you think like, oh, like people are going to go on the desktop site. No, nobody goes on the desktop site. Literally, like we'll get most of our engagement from, and it'll tell you like if it's from Instagram, if it's from Twitter, it's all from Instagram, all of it. Like all of our engagement is through Instagram. We obviously, we have people that go on the desktop site, but it is not as much and it's not as profound as it on, you know, social media. So as much as like social media can be very toxic and like obviously it's um, Ari and um, Elise were saying and Lexi, it's like kind of like very self, like like the amount of like negativity that is present in media is really disgusting. People are always on their phones, always. And that goes for, you know, MDs and, you know, other producers or people that are looking for positions to be filled within whatever production or what's going on in the world. And it's all on technology nowadays. So as much as like we wish that people would like step away from it and try like other um avenues and it's just really like the reality of the world we live in especially now um where people have way too much time on their hands at home and everyone's on their phone so yeah. i think bouncing off of what ari said too like reading the comments and like what these like really old dudes like sitting on their couch like sitting like making comments and stuff like sometimes it's like it's easy to laugh at it because you just know like you look at their page and they're following like two people and have no posts and you're like okay I get it <laughs> but a lot of the times too like you have to just I found that if I, I find a comment like super offensive like towards my playing or something I'll just be like all right I'll just work on it like if that makes me feel bad about it then I'll take that and go okay that's something I need to improve on but it, a lot of the times there it's not really constructive criticism that goes on in social media it's more just like insults like to get a reaction and things so for me it's like I try to look 
at comments and like take it in stride and like thank people when they say nice things and stuff but a lot a lot of it too a lot of the comments that I that I personally get are mostly about like what I'm wearing or how I'm acting in the video I'm like I naturally I think I'm just kind of an animated person like kind of awkward like <laughs> so people always seem to comment mostly guys older men that are like why does she need to make that face when she's playing or why does she need to show her face when she's playing or why is she wearing makeup why is she wearing a tank top like why is she doing this and uh, if you go on my Instagram it's very obvious that I'm not like shy about like wearing things and just being like myself and flaunting whatever you want to call it I guess but at the same time like that that's like a personal choice like a lot of the comments that are said are about appearance and things and people don't listen to the video they I bet half of them don't even turn the sound on they're just looking and going oh you know she obviously is just doing this for attention and da, da, da. but it's like most of the time no <laughs> actually 99 percent of the time it's like no I'll get dressed for a video I'm not gonna me in my like pajamas and like you know look nasty or whatever I'm like you know trying to look at least a little presentable <laughs> but people take that as like oh she's just doing it to look like a certain way or it she does not really playing you guys just like the way she looks and da 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 you know and a lot of gross comments too there's a lot of nasty things that like guys say and I got a comment or a question the other day by another like young female player and she's like how do you deal with that because I read those and I like cringe and I'm like you know for a while like that used to really make me feel gross I'm like man maybe I should wear like a potato sack <laughs> you know just so like but I'm like I'm not gonna dumb down who I am and what I like to do and how I like to dress and you know be a certain way just because some random dude I've never met that's like 95 and you know goes on and says like oh yeah you know so and so like it's disgusting but it's like it's only gonna get worse and worse the more that you decide to like showcase what you can do because a lot of people always have something to say and the more exposure you get the, the more that there's gonna be good and bad so it's kind of just like eh you just kind of got to be yourself and do whatever you want and then forget about the people that not necessarily don't matter but aren't there to value anything or give you anything positive that you can make use of you know <laughs> yeah exactly yeah it's so important to keep I think as as you rise up in your career the thicker skin you have to have because the more attention is on you and then you know who you don't know who's watching and they may just want to just you know insult somebody because they would feel better about themselves um and as women i feel like people will find any reason to just insult you it could you could literally be dressed like a nun and people will be like like she's dressed like a nun like what do you think she's doing like why is she dressed like that she's not woman enough and then like you're literally wearing nothing and it's like ooh. Well, she's not even a good player. Like she has to like show off all her body and that just means she can't even play. And it's like, no, oh, that's not it either. <laughs> and so whatever, like it's kind of, it's a double-edged sword because it's like, yes, you want, you know, to rise in your career and you want to achieve bigger goals, but it's like, you also have to be prepared and have your community, especially of women, that's going to be like, no, you, you're doing the right thing. You just have to, as you progress, you just have to, you know, build and become stronger and stronger inside because these people will eat you alive. And, you know, you just have to be it's super confident. And I admire all of you too, because it's like, there will be times when people just have something to say and, you know, mostly from men. Um, and it really sucks, but I think it all just really takes that confidence and community too, because I don't think anyone can do it alone. And yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Brandy. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. 
right. I, I thought it froze. My bad. My bad. You're all good. Um, I'm so sorry for, you know, keeping you all here. If you had, you know, other things to get to, um, it's been already two hours, um, which is amazing. I didn't feel that time going by personally. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's a good point maybe to wrap up unless you all have um, some other things to say. But uh, this has been a really beautiful experience again. And I'm so grateful for all of you who have stayed on and shared all of your experiences and for being or for being courageous, really, because it's not easy to talk about all these things. Um, so I, I'm so grateful to all of you. And thank you, Shayla, for being on board and having the comments on lock and um, paying attention to those. And um, yeah, I'm just extremely grateful. And thank you also to everybody that's watching and hearing what we all have to say. Um, I would love to do this again, honestly. This is really great. It makes me feel, it makes me feel like I'm being heard um, just by what you're all saying. And I'm sure there's also a lot of women out there that feel like they're also seen. Um, so thank you again. The at least can, I'm sure like between all of us, you know, other like dope female musicians too, that if at least continues this, we can recommend like, you know, other panelists as well. Like, I'm just sitting here thinking like, damn, there's so many more musicians. Even I'd like to take a back seat and like hear from. So at least I don't know, you know, know if, if we could reach out to you, if you plan to do a part three, like, you know, Joy needs to get on here, you know, Lynette, like there's hella other musicians. And I'm just like, yo, we need, we need to hear from these ladies too. So yeah, I have a lot of experience and stuff. I know I'm who I'm forgetting people, but we all know other musicians as well and stuff and I'm just sitting here thinking how it would be dope like even beyond musicians just like women in the industry like maybe just even like manage management um like hearing from that side of it or like just um people who engineer stuff like that you know because you know maybe some of the people that are listening aren't musicians but maybe they want to be like you know that person in power you know uh, management or you know do, they do sound or production so I, I think this is a great pl platform that hopefully we can expand it you know women in the industry like and just continue to like grow and build the community you know what I mean most definitely I think that's the goal of you know finding women out there that also would like to share their experiences and also be heard um, and the live music scene, especially and music is like, we need all these moving parts, you know, we need the songwriters to write songs so that we have music to play, you know, and artists have songs to sing and they can go out on the road and promote this. So it's, it's really important also, like you're saying, to include all these, you know, other women that are in other facets um, of music so that they also kind of see where we're at. And it's like, oh, oh yeah, there, there are female instrumentalists out there, like maybe for my session that we're doing, we can have a female bass player. Um, and I didn't even know, I don't even know any female bass players. Um, and so I think also including that in sharing their own narrative too, we can also find commonalities, but I, I will love this to keep growing. And I'm just so thankful that you are all here to be a part of it. And yeah, I just can't thank you enough. I just wanted to add something really quick that is potential is coincidental, but I think it's worth mentioning that today is the hundredth year anniversary of women being able to vote um, related somewhat um, so I just wanted to like note that for anyone who didn't realize that yet for today and just to remind everyone on the panel and that might be listening to encourage all of their female friends to register to vote if you have not yet and um, keep that in mind as that's an opportunity that we are now celebrating today. That is so, I didn't even know it, it's been a hundred years. That is crazy. Like, what is the chance of us meeting on the 100th year anniversary of women being able to vote? That is so crazy. I think 
I believe in like, I'm a little superstitious and I think that's just not even a coincidence. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, thank you so much. And for all, everybody that's watching and also commenting and sharing their experiences as well. And I would love to keep expanding and keep you all in this beautiful, vibrant network. And it's only just gonna go up from here. So thank you again so much. And thank you for staying for this long. And yeah, if, if you all have, you know, anything else you want to add, uh, please feel free. Um, but yeah, this is so beautiful and I'm so proud. <laughs> Thanks Thank for you having us. us. Thank you so much. You guys are all Thank you. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you, you guys. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> Cheers to you all. Yes. Cheers. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll uh, I'll be in touch with you all and also um, update um, our social media just to do the recaps and everything for people who didn't see it. And it will be a, a video available on YouTube so that people can play it back who weren't able to see it. But um, yeah, thank you again. And I will see you all. I hope sometime soon. I hope this all ends. <laughs> but <laughs> oh, right. What's going on with the world? Woo! I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> but yeah, this is so beautiful. And I, I hope to all see you very soon. And um, stay safe and healthy. Um, and yeah, um, we'll be in touch very soon. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.